Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 728 episodes made, broadcasting on CBS Radio Network from 1949 to 1962, we bring to you, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I know when I went to the desert that anyone who plays around with cactus is liable to get stuck. But I didn't remember that another way of saying debt is going west. This is another in the adventures of America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. At insurance investigation, Johnny Dollar is only an expert. At making out his expense account, He's an absolute genius. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Old Caledonia Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Oscar M. Wheaton, Chief Investment Counsel. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during my investigation of suspected skullduggery in the Skull Canyon mine. Or, uh, Mr. Bones, who was that lady I seen you with last night? Or, messing with a mule train is one good way to kick off. Expense account item one. 25 cents. Tip to busboy who brought telephone to my table at the Blue Danube restaurant. Robertson Boulevard, Los Angeles. Uh, where I happened to be uh, working on a case. Your call came right after the liver dumpling soup, taking me out of the soup plate and putting me in the soup. Now, this is the story, Dollar. You make notes and don't interrupt. Two years ago, this company made an investment in a bona fide working gold mine, the Skull Canyon Mine. That's just outside Twin Buttes, Arizona. I see. I said don't interrupt. That's just over the border from Nogales, Mexico. Now, up until three months ago, everything was fine. The profits shown by the mine were good. And then suddenly... Our returns dropped 50%. However, operating expenses, man hours, and so on remain the same, indicating there's been no fall-off in the removal of high SAR. Now, there's something wrong. We want you to go down there and find out what it is. Expense account? Item two. $12.80. I decided that since you invited yourself to the table, dinner at the Blue Danube was on you. Oh, in case you're interested in what you didn't have, it was uh, that liver dumpling soup. Veal paprikash, cherry strudel, and a small coffee. Enjoyed with that case I was working on. An eccentric millionaires who wanted to marry me for her money. She had yes, yes in her eyes, but when I told her I had to say goodnight immediately, she said, Oh, no. Expense account, item three. $120. Burns Lee Flying Service. Charter plane to Twin Buttes, where I checked into the Waterfield Hotel. Called the mine and told the girl who answered that I wanted transportation out there. She said she'd come after me. Having seen too many Western movies, I figured she'd arrive in a buckboard, but instead she picked me up in a Jeep. Oh. Hey, slow down, will you? Before my teeth start falling out. Oh, sorry. I, um, forgot you were tender for it. That's not where I'm tender. Oh. Uh, by the way, Miss Morland... How far is it out to the mine? 23 miles. Oh, no. Is the road like this all the way? Oh, no. About another half mile out of town, there isn't any road at all. Oh, oh. oh if I ever lived through this. From now on, I'm taking my pumps in a burlesque theater. Oh. Much better than walking, mister. <laughs> Say, uh, you said you're out here representing the owner. Uh, What's your job? Uh, well, I'm a, an efficiency expert. Oh, uh, speaking of efficiency, what's your first name? Jackie. Oh, well, in that case, mine should be Gwendolyn. But it's not. It's Johnny. Well, let's not bother shaking hands on the pal. Here comes the end of the road. Oh, 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 oh. The scenery was jumping around like a home movie. My teeth were trying to find out how much abuse my uppers would take from my lowers. 
I felt like I was gradually being hammered down from a tall, thin man into a short, round one. And there I was, caught without my rhinestone-studded motorcycle belt. Well, here you are. Want me to help you out? Oh, very funny. <laughs> Wait, get away. Get lost, you little monster. I'll admit I look like a bag of bones, but I'm too young to die. Go on, I'll beat it. Oh, be a good dog now. Lie down, Nugget. Down. Yeah, Nugget, drop dead. This is mine, office? This is it. Well, Dollar. Welcome to Skull Canyon. I'm Doyle, the manager out here. I'd be happier to meet you if I met you in town. Mr. Dollar's in a foul mood, Jeff. That ride was a little too much for him. That ride would have been a little bit too much for Buffalo Bill. <laughs> well, that's how Jackie keeps that figure as trim as she does. Now, come on inside, Dollar. That's where the books are, and that's where the chairs are. With cushions, I hope. I'll see you guys. Yeah, all right. Sit down. Thanks. Oh. Oh. Well, there you are. You'll find all the figures right in that big, fat book. Yeah. All but Jackie's. Well, I'm not in any hurry to do my arithmetic. Tell me, uh, what do you think of the results around here? You know more about it than I do. How are things going? Well, Dollar, I'll tell you. It was going better than it is right now. Just a few months back, we worked out a pay vein. I'm hoping we'll pick it up again any day now. That sounds reasonable. Any trouble? Help, equipment, working conditions? Well, working conditions could be a lot better, but that, that's a geographical problem. You see, the mine is located here, and the big water supply is eight miles west. We haul the ore across the desert by mule train to the smelter. It's cheaper than trucks. We'd have to build a road for them. Not here, hay is cheaper than gasoline. Uh, you'd um, like to take a look at the mine? Frankly, Mr. Doyle, I'd just as soon climb up a chimney. I hate dark, confined spaces. But, since it's part of my job, I might as well get it over with. The entrance into the mine was through an attic, a horizontal shaft into the side of a hill. We rode in on the tail end of a small red dynamite car, drawn by a donkey junior grade, a burro. It was cooler in there, but I started to sweat the minute we left sunlight and fresh air behind us. I could hear the jackhammers nibbling little gold ear bobs out of the quartz rock for the Christmas tree. Then I heard them stop, and Doyle told me why. Uh, sounds like they're about ready to blast. Oh, great. Oh, open your mouth and cover your eyes. A hundred and fifty yards deeper into the earth, I was beginning to think that mankind is mighty hard to satisfy. The Lord gave us the world's whole surface. Then we had to go and invent gold mines and airplanes. And right then, I'd have settled for an airplane. Oh. What's the matter, Dollar? You look a little green. Oh, feel a little green. Well, look, look. Take some deep breaths and hold them as long as you can. Okay. Yeah, there. That's, that'll perk you up. Well, this is it. Right here is the only face we're working. Ah, uh, it doesn't help. So this is it, huh? Well, let's see the rest of it. Well, I, I told you, this is it. This is the only face we're working. Okay, you guys. Keep it moving. Load that oar. Fill them up. Come on, bend your back. <laughs> well, let's get out of here, darling. Okay, Doyle. I've seen what I came to see. And I also figured I had heard what I came to hear. Dinner that night I had with Doyle and Jackie, and a steak they served gave me a rough idea of what they did with their old burrows. Doyle's attitude gave me a rough idea that maybe he'd seen my eyes light up when I heard those jackhammers snorting away in some other part of the mine, just after he had told me that where we were standing was the only place being worked. After dinner, Doyle went back to the mine, leaving me alone with Jackie, which was better than dessert. Uh... By the way, Jackie, just what's your job out here? Oh, I'm just sort of a secretary and bookkeeper and jeep driver. Uh-huh. How'd you happen to land here in Skull Canyon? 
Well, I took the job because I was going to marry the man who was the manager then, Doyle's old boss. I met him in college. He was a mining engineer. His name was Larry Harkin. Well, what happened? I was left at the altar. When I got out here, he was gone. Guess he got stage fright and changed his mind. Anyway, nobody's heard from him since. Least of all me. Come on, I'll show you where he sleeps. <laughs> It was a real romantic night. Old Nugget the dog was carrying on a long-distance conversation with his country pheasant, the coyotes up in the hills. The air was soft and warm, and so was Jackie's arm. Stars hung low. And so did my spirits when she bid me good night after she introduced me to my roommate. Hi, you sonny. An old mule skinner named Kangaroo. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Oh. By chance. Well, better than a sand bed and a saddle pillar. Oh. Hey, uh, for a pine shack, this has a mighty fancy floor. What is it, mahogany? No, tobacco juice. Oh. Helps keep out the sidewinders. What do you mean, help? Little snake critters crawl in out of the hot sun to get cool. Where are you from, sonny? Uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Well, I'll be turned to... I don't reckon it shows through, but I'm a Easterner myself. I'm out from New York State, 53 years ago. Little town of Prattville. How do you see it was? Mm, that's pretty dull. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Say, uh, are you the one that handles the mules on the run out to the smelter? I'm one of them. Well, how's chances of hitching a ride with you in the morning? You'll have to get up early. All right, then, I'll get up early. Well, then, stop wasting your breath on a lot of dang fool words. You summoned on the kerosene lamp. Quick! Night! I lay awake, thinking about that jackhammer I'd heard working the supposedly inactive end of the Skull Canyon mine earlier that day. This didn't take too much pounding into my skull before I decided that Doyle was working on a vein for his own personal profit. I also knew that for him to convert the ore into gold, he had to get it to a smelter. So I figured that the mule skinner, Kangaroo, was the best place to start asking questions. Ah, uh, it's funny how a sleepless night can sour the beauty of a desert sunrise. Get there. The sun's getting awful hot. Why, it ain't nothing, Sonny. Some days that old sun's got your tongue hanging out your fur. Gets a real nice tan. Oh, how do you stand it? Hey, what's that stomach pump doing way out here? Stomach pump? What in tarnation are you talking about? Oh, that's a clever name for a light airplane. Hey, looks like he's getting ready to give us a buzz. Hey, hey, mules! Hey, you, Monroe! Steady, blast you. Uh, 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 he's the loudest mouth ding ding old mule I ever did hear. Hey, here he comes. Oh, 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 First thing I learned was if you ever want to panic a team of mules, just buzz them with an airplane. The second thing I learned was that little canyon we were approaching was loaded with armed horsemen who came galloping out like they were trying to make history at Tan Paran. (laughs) 
The gunman didn't do anything to me except hold me at bay while the plane picked itself a landing and disgorged its one-man air force. Buenos dias, amigos. Why, you don't look happy to see me. Maybe my friends scared you with their guns, eh? Hey, old man, who is this new boy who rides with you today? Hey, his name's Dolly. And right now, I wish it was hop along Cassidy. Well, let me introduce myself. They call me El Puerco. That's because I look like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is because I'm so greedy, too. I want what you got with you. Why, Galdin, your miserable son of a child? Now, take it easy, old timer. It's well, okay. All I've got on me is a wristwatch and a few bucks. Let them have them. And besides, what's he going to do with a wagon load of unrefined gold ore? <laughs> you talk like a little boy. I know what you have with you, and I know where it is. It's under the seat. Little white bags, thirty thousand dollars of pure gold. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Johnny Dollar. But first, hardly a clue to start on, and the witnesses' stories of hopeless variants. That was the job that the Birmingham, Alabama police faced in the murder called The Case of the Hue and Cry. Later tonight on Gangbusters, Birmingham's own police chief comes to CBS to tell you how they tracked down the apparently unmotivated murder. Be sure to hear this true-to-life police story, reenacted on Gangbusters. Gangbusters and the Adventures of Philip Marlowe are regular Saturday night features on most of these same CBS stations. Now, with our star, Charles Russell. We return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. So there I was, Johnny Dollar, efficiency expert. I had efficiently gotten myself in trouble. I was efficiently letting El Puerco walk off with a large pot of your gold, and stood a good chance of efficiently getting myself shot in the belly. There we are, amigo. I feel better now the gold is in my little aeroplane. I hope you're not mad with me. You know, I need the money to pay my taxes. <laughs> okay, okay. You got what you wanted. Why don't you take off and get out of here? That ding gang rascal, he's probably figured on shooting us. Oh, no, old man. I'm a very scientific bandido. You think I want to shoot you and get killed myself for murder? Oh, no. I let your mules do the dirty work. Well, Manuel, Pedro, Juanito, Phil, adelante. This man has tied them up. Tied them to the stake back to back. And the rest of you tie up the mules in a circle around me. In nice and close. Then I will get him a little aeroplane and dive on the mules. And the mules will kick their heads off. <laughs> Pitching horseshoes may be fun, but not when they're being pitched at your head by a mule. Once we were tied back to back on a stake, the nearest available technical advisor, Kangaroo, was anything but encouraging. That's your trouble with a gold dirt mule. When they get riled up, they think with their feet. Here he comes. Oh, you mule ho. Oh, there. I guess we should. Yeah. I ain't stun mules 40 years for nothing. I can handle them. Oh, nice going, kangaroo. Now, listen, Sonny, I got me an idea. Yeah, what is it? Well, go something like this. Uh, hey. Uh, oh. Just as the idea, whatever it was, hit Kangaroo, a hoof from one of the mules scored a ringer around my cranium. Ah, the stars look beautiful. They came out in the shape of a horseshoe. And as I slipped into that familiar Betty by for private eyes, the world of hit-on-the-head darkness, I could hear Kangaroo's advice, too little and too late. Ah, there you see. You can never trust a mule. Never trust a mule. Never trust a mule. A 
long time later, the curtains of my eyelids went up on the next act. But something was wrong. The stage was still dark. The stars were still there, but not in a horseshoe pattern. I closed my eyes and dreamed some more. I was lying near an oasis in the Sahara Desert, and a beautiful maiden was bending over me, kissing me. She was breathing hard. And she could have used some sense at it. Huh? What? Nugget, get away from me, you mangy cur! Nugget, get away from me! Johnny, you frightened me. Huh? What? Uh, Jackie, what are you doing out here? Well, take it easy, pal. It's a darn good thing I am out here. You getting yourself kicked in the head. Let's just say the wrong end of a horse got mixed up with the wrong end of a mule. Where's Kangaroo? Where are the mules? What's going on? Johnny, relax, relax. Kangaroo and the mules are on their way back to the mine. Oh, where's uh, Pancho Tortilla? Who? There was a Mexican bandit out here. The greatest piece of typecasting since the Gutenberg Bible. Oh, El Puerco. Yeah. Yeah, Kangaroo told me about him. Come on now. Try to get up. Come on. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, what happened to you? Your clothes are all torn. Yeah. This is Mr. Doyle's idea of a proposal of marriage. We were mm-hmm. supposed to fly off together to South America tonight. Been planning it for a long time. Well, what made you change your mind? Oh, you know how it is. Best laid plans of mice and men. Oh, yeah. You're talking to an expert. If everything went all right for me, where would I be next week? Same time, same station. But but what's your angle? I told you before. I came out to Skull Canyon to marry a man. I've reason to believe that Doyle did away with them. To get his job so he could milk the mine. Well, I stayed on and acted just interested enough in Doyle to get him nice and relaxed. Hoping he'd spill something. Well, so far all it's been is bragging up life in South America with him. Yeah. Now, I, I hope you can help me. And I know I can help you. How? Well, Doyle set up a refining layout right in the mine. When the gold he's been stealing comes out, it's pure gold. Uh-huh. Then somebody in the mine must have tipped off El Puerco. Mm -hmm, Doyle did. He and El Puerco are working together. El Puerco's job was to get the gold across the border and you out of the way. I see. Well, listen, you ever been in the mine? I mean, could you show me the way the refining layout? Oh, no, no. Doyle's never let me inside. Well, how about the charts of the mine? They're in the safe. I've got the combination. If we can just get in without Doyle seeing me, I can get him. Now, leave that to me. Come on, let's get going. Wait a minute. How do we get back? Well, I came out in the jeep. (laughs) Oh, my aching head. Uh, this is close enough, Star Eyes. We better pull up right here. All right. Not quiet. Say, the wedding may be off, but it sounds like the reception is still on. No, that's the regular Saturday night square dance. Oh. Well, look, from here, which way is the office? I- I'm lost. It's right over here. Oh. Come on, I'll show you. You were in it yesterday. When we rounded the corner of the office building, my heart was doing a dozy go. Oh! The door of the safe was open, and so was the mouth of the fellow in front of us. But he wasn't saying anything. He was lying on the floor, dead. El Puerco, the pig. Oh, what a spot for a big red apple. Johnny is dead. He must have come back for something. Kangaroo must have caught up with him. Uh, whoever caught up with him, caught up with him, but good. Come on, let's go take a look for Kangaroo. Wait. Yeah. Careful, darling. Door may be in there. Boy, tight spots really give that word darling a good workout, don't they? Okay, darling. Wait out here. I'll be careful. Uh, say, partner, huh? you seen Kangaroo around here? Kangaroo? Yeah. Well, sure. Kangaroo came in here uh, looking for Doyle. Well, did he find him? Well, uh, don't know. Doyle went over to the mine. Is that where Kangaroo went? Well, if I was looking for Doyle, that's where I'd go. Thank you, bottleneck. <laughs> I don't know why I was in such a hurry heading straight into trouble. But the trouble started popping before we got to it. Oh, what 
Jackie was only guessing, but I could only hope she wasn't guessing right. Johnny. Hmm? Johnny, I thought I saw somebody flashing just inside. Probably somebody's last spark of life. Now, take it easy. You stay right here. I'll move in from the side of the entrance. No, I don't... Oh. All right. Be careful. Oh. We sure got you good, partner. Okay, Jackie. You can relax. The right man got it. Your play man. Mr. Doyle. Hey, kangaroo, you can come on now. Everything's all right. It's us, Jackie and Dollar. Hey, you are. Don't make a move, Hey, what? What the? Harry! Hey, what's up? Harry, you mean the guy you thought was dead? The guy you were supposed to marry? Yes. Oh, Larry. Larry, darling. I'll, I'll kill you. your first interest was feeding your mules so that you didn't get mixed up in all that shooting. Yep. Poor. Well, I'll tell you. When three bad eggs like Hodges and Doyle and El Puerco get together double-crossing each other, they all got to wind up in the omelet. They're dead. Sure feels good to get your boots off. That uh, Larry feller thought he was pretty smart. Holding up in that mine with his own private smelter, using Doyle for a front. The only thing was, he didn't figure on Doyle falling in love with his woman. Yeah, who wouldn't? Hey, mm-hmm. for a young fella, you sure talk a lot. How about using some of that breath you're wasting on that kerosene lamp, huh? Oh, All right. <laughs> Expense account, item four, six dollars and ten cents. One quart snake bite medicine, 32 ounces of prevention in uh, case a snake should bite you. Item five, three dollars and forty cents, with which I purchased the nicest gift I could think of for a gal in Jackie Moreland's position. A telegram to you, requesting that you give her a job she very much deserved. The managership of the Skull Canyon Mine. You see, when she first found out that man she was going to marry didn't love her, She took out her affection in the territory, which makes me very sorry that I wasn't born in the state of Arizona. Uh, Expense account item six, $164.35. Transportation, Twin Buttes to Hartford. Uh, Expense account total, $947.99, which makes just about as much sense as you can make without making a dollar. Signed, yours, uh, no charge for that double talk. Uh, truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Gordon T. Hughes and stars Charles Russell. Script by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd. Featured in the cast were Dora Singleton, John Daner, Willard Waterman, Fred Howard, and Don Diamond. The special music is written and conducted by Leith Stevens. Your announcer is Paul Masterson. Be sure to be with us at the same time next week when another unusual expense account is handed in by... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Music Popular and Music Western are on the bill for CBS listeners again tonight. Vaughn Monroe and his band will present the five top tunes of the week 
plus Army and Navy marching songs, Anchors Away, On Brave Old Army Team, and many others. Gene Autry follows right on the heels of Vaughn's caravan with favorites straight from the land of sagebrush and six guns. For an hour of wonderful music, hear Vaughn Monroe's caravan and the Gene Autry Show tonight and every Saturday on most of these same CBS stations. Stay tuned now for Vaughn Monroe's caravan, which follows immediately on most of these stations. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, meets adventure every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.